There are many forms of transport available to us today. I'd like to talk about what I consider to be the best form of transport there is, the bicycle. Let's take a look in detail at the vocabulary of the bicycle. There are over a billion bicycles in the world. Until recently, the bicycle was the world's most popular form of transport. Unfortunately, there are now over a billion cars in the world too, and there'll be another billion in twenty years or so, if the demand for cars from China and India continues. What a disaster for the planet, for the environment. And for you and me, I don't have a car. My main form of transport is my bicycle. Bicycles are also known as bikes, cycles, or pedal cycles. Bicycles come in many shapes and sizes. The history of the bicycle began in 1817, when Baron von Dreis. Invented a two-wheeled wooden machine, which could be propelled by the feet. The hobby horse, as it became known, was not too popular, as it was not very practical on the rough roads of the day. In 1865, a new fad sprang up in the form of the velocipede, or bone shaker. Made entirely of wood, the fast foot earned its nickname of bone shaker on the uneven cobbles of the day. The bone shaker was the first machine to be driven by pedals. The pedals were directly attached to the front wheel. As if the shaking of bones wasn't enough, in 1870 the penny farthing was invented. Made of metal, not wood, the penny farthing was named after the large penny of the day, and the smaller coin, the farthing. It also had pedals attached directly to the front wheel. The bigger the wheel, the faster you could go with each revolution of the pedals. The size of the front wheel was only limited by the length of the rider's legs. Being seated directly above the wheel's center of rotation was something of a design flaw. If the front wheel hit an obstruction and stopped, the rider's forward momentum would throw them headfirst into the ground. Despite the ever-present danger of taking a header or coming a cropper, penny farthings were surprisingly comfortable to ride. Indeed, they were comfortable enough for Thomas Stevens to become the first man to cycle around the world on a bicycle between April 1884 and December 1886. Before you ask. He took a boat across the wet bits between Europe and America, and America and Asia. That was an amazing feat for the time, and the sight of Stevens atop his penny farthing astonished all who saw him. As cycles of the day used solid tyres, the larger the wheel, the less the rider suffered from bumps in the road. Bumps in the road were the order of the day, as tarmac would not be invented for another thirty years. Sadly, it was the rise in the popularity of cycling that literally paved the way for the car, as cyclists demanded better and smoother roads to cycle on. In 1885, the same year as the first motor car was produced. Cyclists developed the safety bicycle. 
Using the same two-wheel design as Baron von Drace's hobby horse, the safety bicycle was a chain-driven metal cycle which kept the rider closer to the ground. No longer would cyclists face the ever-present danger of taking a header from atop a penny farthing. Unfortunately, human beings, being inherently lazy, found the promise of effortless travel with the internal combustion engine more alluring than the real effort required to propel a bicycle under your own steam. Cars, making use of the technology of the bicycle, also became a symbol of success that the bicycle couldn't hope to match. In 1888, an Irish veterinarian called John Dunlop found a way to make his son's tricycle more comfortable to ride by wrapping a rubber bag of air around the wheel. The pneumatic tyre brought the comfort of the penny farthing to the smaller, chain-driven bicycles. Within five years, penny farthings were no longer being produced. The burgeoning car industry also seized on the pneumatic tyre. It was the advances in metallurgy that made it possible to progress from the wooden bone shaker to the penny farthing and on to the safety bicycle and, unfortunately, the car. The sophistication of today's cars would have astonished the engineers of yesteryear. The sophistication of today's bicycles is not far behind. Let's take a look at one of my bicycles. This is a folding cycle. Strong, versatile, fast and lightweight. With an aluminium frame and lightweight alloy components, it weighs around 11 kilos and can be folded away in about 15 seconds. The portability means I can also take the bike on trains, on buses or in taxis. Now we'll take a look at some of the vocabulary associated with bicycles. To start with, we have the frame. All bikes have a frame, but frames come in all shapes and sizes. This frame is a single sweeping beam of aluminium, hinged in the middle to facilitate folding. Other bikes, like my mountain bike, have a triangular structure, which allows a down tube and crossbar or top tube. Other tubes that make up the frame are the chain stays, the seat stays and the seat tube. The headset, inside the head tube, is the front part of the frame to which the handlebars and front forks are attached. All cycles have handlebars with which the rider steers and controls the bike. The handlebars are also fitted with the brake levers, in this case three finger alloy levers. The brakes are cable operated. The cables run from the brake levers on the handlebars down to the alloy V-brakes which press the brake shoes against the wheel rims. Also on the handlebars are the hand grips. For extra comfort, this bike has ergonomic grips. Built into the right hand grip is the indexed gear shifter. A cable runs from the indexed gear shifter down to the rear derailleur which shifts the chain across the eight differently sized rear sprockets of the cog set. 
The rider provides power by pedaling. The pedals are attached to crank arms, which are attached to the bottom bracket and front chain ring. The chain drives the rear wheel through the cog set which is fitted to the rear wheel axle. The 20 inch wheels have alloy rims and stainless steel spokes. The tyres are reinforced with Kevlar, the same material used to make bulletproof vests, to prevent punctures. Mudguards prevent water and dirt from splashing up from the wheels. The rider sits on the saddle, which is supported by the seat post. Because it's very hot in the summer in Seville, I always carry a water bottle of water. The water bottle is secured on the bike in an aluminium bottle holder. I also carry a bicycle pump to blow up or inflate the tyres to the right pressure. A small tool kit also comes in handy, should a tyre get a puncture or if I need to make adjustments to the bike. I carry the pump and the tool kit on the rear rack. The bike can be left on its kickstand or side stand when needed. The most important safety feature of any bike is a warning device. Cycles are by their nature extremely quiet, and a bell is essential to warn unwary pedestrians of your approach. Though streets ahead of the bone shaker and the penny farthing, this state-of-the-art cycle can trace its origins back 200 years. Personally, I can think of no better form of transport than a bicycle. The satisfaction of getting to where you want to go under your own power is very gratifying indeed, not to mention the sensation, almost akin to flying, that I feel when I'm on my bike. I've been cycling since I was a young boy. I cycle every day and I intend to be cycling for the rest of my life. Cycling is good for your body, good for your wallet, and good for the planet. It's high time governments began to invest in a sustainable cycling infrastructure in every town and city. The visionary writer H.G. Wells said in 1901, Every time I see an adult on a bicycle, I no longer despair for the future of the human race. If he had seen how many cars there are today, he might well have despaired of the future of the human race as I do. You needn't despair about learning English because I've included a lot of useful vocabulary in this video, much of which may be new to you. To get the most out of the learning experience, visit linguaspectrum.com where you'll find an interactivity to go with this video. The interactivity will help you learn and remember the new vocabulary in this video. You'll find a link in the video description. I look forward to seeing you at linguaspectrum.com. Remember to share this video and the links with your friends.